Okay, I mean, I can only speak about that at the most general level, because what to do in any particular circumstance, that's the sort of problem I deal with in my clinical practice all the time. It's like, here's this insanely complicated circumstance. It usually has nothing to do with mental illness. It's just the per person is caught in something ridiculously complex, like, you know, their aunt is sick at home, their husband just lost his job, and they have an illness. It's like, oh my God, it's horrible, you know? Is it, are they mentally ill? It's, no, it's just awful. So how do you weave your way through an awful situation? Well, the particulars matter a lot. And so you have to do strategic analysis, paying attention to the details. But, okay, so that's the particulars. So what's the general case? Well, the general case is maybe Don't falsify your relationship with being to the degree that you can manage that. Now, one of the things that I tell my students is try solving a problem, fixing it. Not trying to solve a problem, but you know, you're gonna fix it. And you can fix it. And it's a problem. And you know it's a problem. Okay, so there's like a precondition here. So let's say there's a bunch of things around you that bug you. And you think, hmm, those things bug me. Why? Well, you don't know, but they bug you. And you might think, well, is one of those things that bug me something I could fix? And you might think, well, yeah, and, and there's another part, which is not only could I fix it, I would fix it. Because you can think, well, I could fix that, but I won't. You know, if you're being honest, you know you just won't do it. But there's often something that you would fix. Start there, fix it, and then try again. Try to see if there's something else you could fix. Like, so if you're gonna beat the lie, you know, you have to start with what you can do. And you start locally, like right, right locally. And you can tell it's the right amount of local because it bugs you. You could fix it and you will fix it. So perfect, that's your problem. That's exactly your problem right there, fix it. Well then everything shifts a little bit. Everything around you is just the balance between chaos and order is a little better, right? Well, the same thing applies to your speech. It's like, okay, I have to lie here because otherwise I'm going to get killed. It's like, okay, well, maybe that's not the place to start. You know, maybe that's just foolhardy. Okay, would I say that you should lie in that situation? I would say, I can't tell because I'm not in a situation and the particulars matter. So I don't know what to say. That situation might be so awful that there's nothing you can do that isn't awful. How about in your own home? How about in relationship to yourself? It's like, how about you start fixing up the little micro lies that you leave lying around everywhere? Then it's gonna make you tougher and more formidable. You keep practicing that for like 15 years, you know, and then maybe you'll be able to start to address some of the larger problems. Maybe you'll even start to understand what the larger problems are, because that's a problem with prematurely trying to do too much, right? It's like, well, is that really the problem? And what makes you think you'll make it better rather than worse? You've got to pick the right size problem. So I would say, you know, start with little weights and work yourself up. And that's how you develop competence anyways, right? Like if you're going to figure out how to set things straight, you might as well start where you can set them straight. And you might think, well, that's trivial. It's like, it's not trivial. You might think it's trivial. You have no idea how important it might be that you straighten up your, your relationship with your, your wife or your son. You have no idea what that might lead to. I mean, just think of what Stellan's relationship with his father led to. Well, it was awful. You know, there's Stellan. He killed like 60 million people. His father was a brute. So, that seems reasonably important. Maybe he shouldn't have been a brute. So, so you know how horrible things can be if you do things wrong. It's like, well, how good can they be if you do things right? You don't know. Try starting. It's like, see what happens. My experience has been like I'm. My experience has been that to the degree that I'm able to speak carefully, and I do speak carefully, and I don't really care about the consequences. It isn't that. It isn't that they don't matter, it's that I'm not speaking to produce a consequence. I'm just trying to say what seems to me to be the case. And that, for me, that's been incredibly, ridiculously um, practically useful, insanely useful. It's opened doors that I would have never dreamed of opening. 
So, and you know, in my professional life, it's produced all sorts of opportunities, and it's been a real aid in my private life too, and in my professional life. It's not like I don't make mistakes. Like I, I don't think that I'm. I would never think of myself as fundamentally a good person. I think maybe I'm fundamentally a bad person, but because I, you know, I have dark thoughts and and I, I'm quite temperamental, and so like. Anyways, you know, I do what I can to deal with all that, and I don't do it perfectly, and I slide backwards, mostly by avoidance, you know, I don't always stay on top of the things I should stay on top of, but to the degree that I've been able to adhere to this mode of being, I can't think of a single thing that's happened that hasn't been, like, in some ways beyond my expectations. So, and it's really fun talking to the students, you know, because it's fun with the, the lectures, because when I'm talking about the mythological material and I can sort of sort out the, the stories, I can just see lights going on everywhere. It's like click, you know, you can see it's like, you can tell when someone has an insight. I think they open their eyes a bit more. You know, maybe that's it, because it's a bit of a surprise, so you can detect it. And it is like light going on, and so, you know, I'll walk someone, through, say, through this Egyptian story, an audience, and they just go click, 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 click. It's fun. It's really fun. So, and, you know, people seem to respond to it positively, which I've always been completely surprised about. You know, I can't believe that I've been able to lecture about the things that I lecture about without, you know, running mightily afoul of something. You know, because my classes are quite different than the the standard psychology class or the standard university class. They're very different, and but that, I don't know, so far it seems to be working, so, which is a surprise to me. So, so that's what I would say to people is like, select the domain in which you can act, straighten it up first, and that'll transform things a bit. Like it'll, it'll, you put your house in order, then you can start to put your town in order, or maybe your street, or maybe your neighbor. God only knows, you know. Start where you can start. And you might think, well, that's, what's that? Well, it's nothing you can wave a placard in the street about, which is a good thing. That's like praying in public, you know. This is more like praying in private. Fix up what you can fix up and see what happens. And I don't think that there's anything that's more powerful than that.